I am the back end handyman. I fix things as cheap as I can, which is often all by myself. I am not a professional. May not be done the right way, but it's done my way. I assume no responsibility if you attempt the same thing and damage anything. Hey guys, back in handyman, and it's been a while since I did a touch up on the house renovation, but I just wanted to show you what I came through with the city inspector and what they said would work. We had the structural engineer come in and tell us how it was built and how we could fix it. He said that we would fur up the walls with two by fours and or two by sixes. Any way to transfer the load from the truss down to the better part of the stud since there was quite a bit of termite damage. So this is what we came up with. If you remember right, we had that big box there and just took a two by eight, went across there and then I actually have two by fours strapped long ways and then we have a two by four going across the bottom you know to make the bottom plate pretty much reframed it but on the side of the board instead of vertical that way when we get you know it's transferring the load down it picked up this roof right here it leveled it out i'd say right there in the middle about where that vent and that light used to be it was it probably took it up a good half an inch three quarters of an inch it was swooping down pretty bad and then i took as you remember these were slid over here and i had that temporary wall well i needed some of the wood from the temporary wall to finish framing out the window here now if i wanted to do it properly i would have took this two by four and went all the way to the end here and had these studs come up right there and cut there to where they were pushing on the two by four so it would transfer the load and that would give me the ability to make these uh, load bearing. These would be helping hold that. But since we already have two by fours and the walls here, two by fours right here are pretty decent. So I just went ahead and went with that and just put these at the bottom of the sill and that at the top of the window now the two boards on the sides of it go all the way up but these here are pretty much just to build a screw sheet rock to and cabinets and all that so there's that now the fun part is lifting buses when they're swooped down so much uh like over here as you remember they were about that far crushed on the two by four because the termite and water damage so therefore I had to get a car jack a three-ton car jack and I got this post over here this four by four post and I took it up to this board and jacked it up until I could get the board under it now when I first originally did it this right here popped I mean I had that coming down here I thought I broke a truss but it didn't it just came loose from a, bur a board they had up there to screw sheetrock to and it made it sound like it broke I was like no crap what's gonna happen is the house gonna cave in but no it, I just freaked out for nothing because all it did was pop loose from the sheetrock now you can also see how right here kind of bows down a little bit then over here See how much straighter it is on this side than it is over there. You can see a bunch of swooping and wavy ceiling. Well, we'll be able to see it better when I take down that popcorn. But today my main focus is getting this wall done. And I thought I'd go ahead and show you guys how I'm doing it because maybe some other people need to reinforce a load bearing wall without moving it or changing the top plate. Of course, this does make it come out an inch and a half, you know, the width of a two by four, but it gives it a lot more uh, structure. You can definitely tell it picked that wall up over there. So now I just need to snap me a line with the chalk line. All right, and this is a chalk line. You pretty much just like screw the screw in over there at the very end. Measure out how far it comes out over here. Snap the line. And then you just take this and 
cut along the dotted line right down along there yeah this cuts through it like pretty much like butter but you see i cut the line already but this right here i just took it at an angle and going through now you kind of have to be careful at taking it at an angle and just going on a straight cut all the way down because if you get too far up in there and let's say you hit a electrical cord it'll cut it right off so another way you can do it is taking this and measuring down and putting your piece of tape and running across that and then as you go through, go across it takes a little longer to do it this way but it's safe but you take it and you just go straight up all the way down the sheet rock just to make sure you're not going to hit any power lines but you know i ramboed that stuff and i just did it diagonally kind of took it at an angle and just cut it like a saw shit right now the fun part i get to drop it and get covered in loose fill insulation this part really sucks shoot just cutting the sheetrock kind of messy so, but this part this is stuff that's been up in there since the house has been constructed remember this is the original part of the house on this back wall so this was an outside wall it's load bearing with the second story built on top of it so it's got a heck of a load on it which is why we're building new sports up i'll let you watch me pull this down and let you see how messy it is it sucks so bad you stay back there right there, okay This sucks. Look how dusty it makes everything. That's why I put the fans over there to blow it out. So now I just pick up the sheetrock and I bag up the insulation and I can put the insulation back in the attic. And the sheetrock and stuff, of course, is trash. Let me get that cleaned up and get the extra nails pulled down. And then I'll show you how I brace up the wall. Now I need to cut power to this back here and pull these two receptacles off because the studs are going to go up against that. So I need to do that bottom plate and then I'll be able to run up the boards. I'm probably going to have to take the sheetrock off this area with all the wiring so that I can see where all the wiring goes to. I don't know what these go to I know that one I'm pretty sure comes up in the bottom of the breaker box but there's not a white one that comes up in the bottom of the breaker box so no idea on that one then we got those two that go running over there so let me get these loose and then we'll reframe the wall and then we'll worry about all that other stuff Alright guys, this is what we're looking at here. There's my 2x8 up there. I came across and I put a nail right there to hold it in and I put it on top of that board and then I put a nail right there to hold it in and then I set it on that nail and that's how far down it was. You know, I just figure out exactly how many inches are supposed to be in between the stud. And then I'll come over here and I'll put this jack See how it's sitting on the bottom board that I put on there? 
going across, I have a screw over there to hold it down. But over here, I don't have it nailed or nothing. I put the jack on top of it and I put this four by four post up there going to it. And then as I jack this up, it goes up and you can see that I've moved it that much already. And then this pre-cut two by four that I've measured the exact distance of what it would take, put it on there and see how it fits right there. Fits underneath it. So I'm a little high on the jack, which it's fine. I'll go ahead and screw this in and then I'll let it down. I'll, go, I'll probably go ahead and put that two by four in too that's gonna go right there underneath the edge. And nail all this up before I actually nail that top board in. Right now it's got the little nails, so they'll be fine. But I'm gonna get this nailed up and then I'll be back to show you after I'm done. All right, this is what it looks like when it's all done. Went ahead and ran all the way to the end. Now I put the sheetrock up to cover it up. I will have to open the sheetrock back up because I'm gonna have to figure out the wiring because the wiring is all kind of goofy. But everywhere there's stud coming up, I put three nails, 16 penny, and then about two foot apart or 16 inches apart on each stud. And then when there's two studs, it doubled up. I will put like three screws in each one to keep the boards from bowing out. And that's it for that. Now I gotta figure out the wiring. I'm gonna get my permits and stuff. Now, yeah, remember that stud going right there? So, I put the little four by four block in there. I just nailed it in there. That to that is 16 on center, but that to that isn't, so. Hmm. That's as good as I'm gonna get on it. <laughs> Oh, cleared out. I love it. That's it for now. Um, update you when I get somewhere else significant. Yay. Peace. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and want to follow my process, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, man, while you're at it, check out my other YouTube channels. The Stay Home Dad, The Back End Handyman, The Dorcher Family, and The Average Stoner. Just a little bit of what I do from day to day as a stay home dad.